Midnight is what we got next on the rundown. So if you are unfamiliar, if you've yet to see the Moon Knight series and you're aiming to see it, uh, I'm sorry, we are going to get spoilery about it. So we've talked in previous episodes. Oh my gosh, it's got a figure. Hey, we have a special guest. Um, but who is it? Talk- I don't know. I mean, he looks is like it Mark? A, is it looks- Steven or is it spoiler? Ah, uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Be spoiler. I did. I did it before the official spoilers were up too. <laughs> All right. Well, we talked about uh, the previous four episodes. This is a shorter series for Marvel on the show. Uh, we had Tony on to discuss it. Um, and then uh, we might as well get into five and six now, and then we can talk about kind of the series as a whole and how it maybe falls into the rest of the uh, Marvel shows. Um, I know we've had rankings before. Mine will probably be different now again. But um, Moon Knight, episode five. I, I guess I should say before that, Pete, being we haven't had you on the show to talk about this yet, and being Ooh, you yeah. are a Moon Knight uh, fan yeah. before this show, how has the series, how had this series been looking to you up to and through episode four? Um, let me just start by saying lifelong Moon Knight fan. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad took me over to his friend, and my dad's friend happened to be a comic book collector. And so he and my dad went off talking about this and that, and I just went through all his comics. And then I saw this cover, and dog lover, werewolf fan, I thought, what is this? There was a guy fighting a werewolf on a ladder attached to a helicopter <clears throat> hooked into it. <laughs> and uh, my dad's friend saw me like really getting into this comic book and he's like, you want it? Keep it. So that's how uh, I came to cute. own Werewolf by Night 33. And then a couple of years later, I find out that Moon Knight gets his own uh, comic series and start reading it sporadically. I wasn't really a comic book collector at the time, <clears throat> but a couple of years later, when uh, Mark Spector, Fisticonchu came out, then I started uh, with uh, episode uh, issue one of that. So early days of Moon Knight, <clears throat> he was Batman ripoff. You can't get around it. <clears throat> he had gadgets that were moon-based instead of uh, bat-based. And I always thought that Batman got the Dark Knight from Moon Knight. Until I read issue one, sentence one of Batman, and it said the Dark Knight prowls on account. Well, there goes that theory. So (laughs) Batman has always been the Dark Knight. So he came first in every conceivable way. But that didn't bother me. You know, if you've got... Superman, and you've got Shazam, and if you've got Prince Namor, and you've got uh, Aquaman, and <clears throat> having superheroes with big overlaps in uh, uh, weapons and gadgetry and superpowers isn't a deal breaker for me. Now, where Moon Knight and Batman also overlapped was in ripping off Sherlock Holmes. So, Sherlock Holmes used to wear disguises to try to get information, and he had a system of informants. And so Batman, DC Detective Comics, was the world's greatest detective. Moon Knight also was a street-level superhero, and he had different disguises to try to get underground information. So he was Stephen Grant uh, portraying a Playboy billionaire, like Bruce Wayne, and that's how he would fight uh, white-collar crime when he was going after, you know, street toughs and uh, criminal empire. That's when he was cab driver Jake Lockley. Uh, So even in the early days of Moon Knight, you knew that Mark Spector was the guy, 
but he had these aliases that he would uh, use <clears throat> in different comics. So high expectations going into the Disney series. Uh, and they start off and they completely change <clears throat> Moon Knight's uh, powers. Like he, in the beginning, he didn't have any superpower. And now he's got a suit that materializes out of nowhere and it's magic based and it can heal him. But you know what? The suit looks cool. So I'm a sucker. Like I said, I like werewolves. If your werewolf looks cool, I'm going to give you a lot of rope. Your story <laughs> can be terrible. Uh, the dialogue can be more or less nonsense. But if he looks cool, taking down Dracula and Frankenstein next to uh, Breen, it's an okay movie in my eyes, no matter what you thought of it. Right? <laughs> but if your werewolves look like shaved poodles on steroids, I got a problem with your movie. I don't care if Kate Beckinsale's in it or not. So, <laughs> in How Moon Knight, you. the costume <laughs> looked good. It did. The jackal looked terrible, and it was an homage to Werewolf by Night. <clears throat> so I was upset. I was concerned. They're like, oh, their Werewolf by Night looks terrible. He looks like Luke from Harry Potter. That's garbage. And Disney Plus just came out with a good-looking evil Wookiee in Boba Fett. So we know they have the technology to have a cool-looking fur-based evil creature. We can do better. Come on. We we can do this in Moon Knight. So <clears throat> issues with Moon Knight, the series, I think it was episode three, where I thought, uh-oh, they're going to fall into the Voltron, Incredible Hulk storylines where... You have your initial conflict. It builds throughout the series. Nothing can save us now except, uh-oh, we're going to form Ultron, or Voltron, and then that'll defeat the bad guy with the magic sword. Every episode, they formed Voltron, got the sword out, and that saved the day. Nobody can stop the bad guys and the Incredible Hulk until he gets mad, and then he becomes and throws people through the wall. So at the end of episode three, no Moon Knight, no Moon Knight, no Moon Knight. Moon Knight shows up, gets stabbed because he can heal. It's almost like Cyborg in DC Comics. He's the only guy who regularly gets his limbs ripped off <laughs> because they can just reattach them because he's a robot. If he would have been Batman and got his arms ripped off, that wouldn't have worked so good. So, sure. yes, <laughs> Deathstroke, yeah. Deadpool. Yeah, very, yeah, very. Those things always bother me. That's a good point, Pete, with the, uh, like, you know, Cyborg gets his limbs ripped off because he can, because they can come right. back. I, it's all that, always that in, in movies too, where some you're sword fighting and then you, someone loses their sword and then they are able to like land in good punches and stuff and just dodge. It's like, well, right. boy, you should have just done that to start. You just dodge while you have your sword. You're still effective here as opposed to a minute ago, you would have had every limb chopped off had you not had your sword. Now mm -hmm. you've been disarmed and you're fine still. So. Yes. Or they're able to dodge the blade, but not the hilt, because the hilt is dull, and you can yes. get it. Yes. Yes. So. yes. So, in the comics, Moon Knight, if he got stabbed, he'd be dead, so Moon Knight never got stabbed in the comics, right? Well, sure. Not fatally, but no, he's got this new power where he can heal. But I'm okay with it, because the costume looks cool, and the back and forth between Stephen Grant and uh, Mark Spector fantastic so a little bit of grumble and then oh we get superman 2 iron man 3 thor 1 that stupid plot line where we tune in to see moon knight and he loses his powers you've you, you've got the, the logo right there it says moon knight right it doesn't say come see ordinary guy mark specter without his powers or Iron Man with, or <clears throat> Tony Stark without his suit. Let's go see Thor without his hammer. Nobody really paid money to go to the theater to not see superheroes in action and complain and go on a quest to get their powers back. So when Moon Knight lost his powers, I'm like, oh, come on. 
<laughs> and Thor becomes the dude. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Dad abides. That's cute. It was a gift for myself. No. Uh, so, <laughs> episode five, not a lot of Moon Knight. So, if you've been waiting like me since the early 80s for a Moon Knight show, only get six episodes. And one of them has little to no Moon Knight. You're not happy. Like it's cool to see Stephen and Mark in a in like a buddy cop type of situation, um, and it's really entertaining. But that's not why I tuned in. That that can be the garnish. I don't need it to be the main entree. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, Andrea, episode five we're picking up there yet what how did you feel about this one like like pete's saying not not a lot of moon knight involved yeah. going back to jurassic park we're eventually going to have some moon knight in our moon knight show yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i actually i wasn't bothered by the lack of moon knight in this episode but i feel like it's because i was very excited about all of the mythology world building stuff that was happening that I felt like should have been in earlier episodes, but fine, we're getting it here. And I loved like other characters. I felt like episode five, even though like the focus was Mark and Steven, it really brought home to me like other players in the game, like being introduced to Tawaret, um, to, you know, like the whole like, idea of like the afterlife, the duat, the field of reeds, like, you know, you're you're in the ship sailing to wherever, you know, you're gonna be ending up by the tails of your balance. It's like kick ass stuff that I really loved. It was like they finally felt like we were able to like build out supporting characters, supporting worlds, supporting plot lines. So I didn't I didn't miss Moon Knight in this these episodes but i felt like there like i noticed it because i felt like there was actually lack in other episodes like we had spent too long in other episodes not having enough moon knight action that like this could have been a really cool moment to pause and delve into psyche but we were already like served too much psyche in other episodes so, like, this episode didn't bother me, but it bothered me paired with the other episodes because I felt like other stuff could have been going on and this could have been a really cool pause to, like, delve into that relationship. And then, like, I, I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, Pete, but maybe, like, it wouldn't have been so, like, where's my moon night in this episode? Because you'd been like, I'm already very satisfied. Cool, we're taking a break and diving into the complex relationship in the background and like what's going on and why why we need to like balance our scales and figure it out yep and then it wouldn't have been like where's moon knight the the only appearance he had was his origin story and he just name dropped uh his uh commanding officer yeah who is the joker of the batman rival not necessarily like like a clown prince but he is his arch enemy and just an appearance or even like a token shadow Shadow, reference like they do in the comics so i needed i needed more sure moon knight action in the episode to balance the the void of it but yes what you're saying it, it was an interesting take on Moon Knight's origin story, and maybe it's a retcon of, uh, because like I was saying, originally he didn't have this associative identity disorder. He was just a guy who had different aliases right. to fight crime. And for whatever well, reason. We got, we, well, we got that reinvention in the comics. You know, like, so the idea that I'm sure it had drawing those parallels with Batman a lot, what, how can we differentiate Moon Knight more? And so then there we get the, the, as you say, the retcon or the retelling of the origin and the comics and clearly, and that seems to be 
what most of them are always doing now is taking the most modern iteration of whatever character when they adapt it. Um, it's never, it's very seldom the original version. It's the latest version. Mm -hmm. um, or the original is given a very uh, abbreviated screen time. Yeah. They, they, like you said, you know, a nod to the werewolf issue. They, they give, uh, they put Easter eggs in and they give nods to the past, but yeah. they're always adapt adapting the, uh, the more, more modern one. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought with our episode five, um, a friend of the show, uh, Mike, I was talking to him about it. He thinks that episode five is maybe the, well, he doesn't say maybe he says it's the best episode, single episode of television he's ever seen. Wow. That's a lot. That's bold. So that's I started thinking about different things. As like, so he's not saying the show, but like this episode, with the way that it de delved into the idea of childhood trauma being something used to then split uh, and create a, another personality in yourself to protect um, your own psyche, that kind of thing was just like everything you'd want in an episode. And Oscar Isaac nailed that performance, and you know everything. And, so and I will, I will agree with some of that. Like mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have in my notes. Oscar Isaac is killing this. Yeah, like his performance in these last few episodes was just—I mean, home run. He crushed this. Um, I, I mean, and I also wrote down that you know this this introduction of like a a superhero origin story being like the origin of his split identity, very mm -hmm. unique, and I love this. You know, I, I, if, if this is the route that they're deciding to go, like they've committed to this whole like dissociative right. identity, you know, like being a thing in the, in the show, this is the route we're going. This episode introduced that in an amazing creative storytelling capacity. Yeah, I, I wrote my notes that That's I thought that this ballsy. show is being told out of order. You know, sure. I, I understand what they were trying to do. It's like set up this mystery. You don't know what's happening. The person is like forgetting moments of time. They're doing that whole thing. But that to me didn't pan out and wasn't interesting past the first episode. The first episode, that was kind of interesting. And then it just became annoying anytime we got more of that. And then we were introduced to their persona and like it was just it wasn't fun for me. I would have been much more enthralled if we would have had this as our opening to understand the tr and even if we flash back to it at points and didn't have to be all at once, but this was our introduction to the origin of the character and then Ooh. we uh you know, you wouldn't get the game later of like what's happening and why are yeah. we blanking and why you know, why am I missing my date because of this, you know, we would know. If you look I... at the series as the story of Stephen Grant, then it makes more sense because he is an yeah, not Mark Spector. He's yeah. a man that doesn't necessarily have a past. And... So I, I half agree with John. I think this could have been earlier, but I do not think this could have been episode one because we wouldn't have cared. We wouldn't, see, have, but we wouldn't I think have cared enough. This, I, this needed a this little show, bit more emotional buildup to see, have I this kind of that impact. Because I didn't care about these characters at all. It, this episode was what made me care more than anything. Because up until this point, the banter or in the back and forth between Mark Spector and everyone and uh, um, what's his face was just bothersome to me. I didn't like was, these characters. Steven? Yeah, they were they were not good characters to me. And they. So when I saw the trauma, that made me sympathize. And so mm -hmm. I can understand more. And but I had to sludge through four other episodes where I don't like these characters. So, but to I feel like empathize. But I feel like you're you're maybe like a little bitter because there were four episodes that you had to go through. I feel like you wouldn't be as bitter if this was like the second episode. I I just feel episode, like yeah. the first episode be. would be, be too soon because you do have to set up the like. There is a good storyline to tell about like, holy shit, what's happening to me? I have blip time and now I'm like, you know, 
surrounded I, by corpses. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm surrounded yeah. by corpses. Why are my hands bloody? Like, why can't I give this guy the scarab thing? Like, that was the episode one was really good setup. But if they moved this episode to episode two, or like or like half of this episode, because you can't you can't have the underworld. You can't have that be the premise for why we're doing this. Or I mean, you could, but there'd be a lot of jumps that the first episode would have had to make. So, but yeah, I, I just I feel like this could be two, maybe three, but not one. The the banter for me was everything. I loved it. <laughs> We're so in, on like all different spectrums. John's like, yeah. cut the banter. Pete's like more banter, and I'm like middle banter <laughs> because <laughs> I I needed like more original Moon Knight costume and. Sure. Steven was Bruce Wayne in the comics, and now he's this very meek, callow, <laughs> the the opposite of Playboy billionaire. Yeah, right. He, he's working in a gift shop, uh, and yep. he's not great at it. So that's yeah. hilarious to me. That's that's an inside joke for me. So I'm like, okay, what are you doing, Stephen Grant here? And that he is so reluctant to give up. Oh, they say summon the suit, summon the suit. I was not a fan of the Mr. Knight persona because, again, I want the original costume. And I'm like, they're going to put Mr. Knight in here? Right. Save it for season two, three. Like, just give me Moon Knight. And then when Mr. Knight showed up, I laughed my ass off. And I go, if that's how you're going to introduce him, and that's going to be the costume for Steven, applause all the way. My God, you did. That I, I did not think I was going to like the won me over. <clears throat> now, <if> you, <laughs> John's like on the very opposite end. Anybody else at, feel like Goldilocks and the Three Bears right now? <laughs> That's how I feel. We uh, So if we jump ahead into the spoiler, if you look at Stephen Grant's costume with Mr. Knight, no hood, full white, right? Full moon. Yeah. Hood on for Mark Spector Moon, Moon Knight, you get some of the white face, and that could be the waxing, waning. Third persona, what's he going to look like? And he's going to have, is he going to be New Moon? Right. So. Yeah, no, that's true. So. I see, to me, that's, that's, that's very surprising because it's not like a nod. You know, it's not like an inside joke that he's that uh, Stephen Grant is sort of a bumbling kind of Love dork a loser. Instead. It's like, I would be like, if they, if they adapted my Bruce Wayne into that, I'd be like, this is ridiculous. What is this? Per this is nothing like the character. Like, right. why would you do this to this person? Sure. And they needed that. They needed so because ultimately we had the difference between the two of them as silly as I think it sounds is not enough because you had one that was a loser and kind of pathetic, but he knew about Egyptian mythology and the other, other one was they just kind of made him a jerk, you know? So as opposed to, we could have someone that's like, I'm very competent and I'm like used to being moon Knight, and I do this and I've, I'm well adjusted. And you have the other one that's like, I don't know, know that stuff but I'm like a Bruce Wayne kind of character that might've been more interesting, like a killer versus a philanthropist, you know, a like hard nosed assassin ish kind of person next to a like, you know, business savvy, you know, whatever guy instead of, and I don't know. I just didn't, um, it, it to me also made it as like when I came into moon Knight, I was thinking maybe this is a darker show. And after episode one, I thought maybe it will be, you know, and as soon as we got in episode two, I'm like, okay, it's not going to be. It's not going to be. We went with the jokes again. We went well, with the laughs. It's not a serious. Five, 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 and, five and six picked up. Five and six picked up some darker elements again. Yeah, that's what five was. I think five was a really standout because I wrote that in those two. It's like finally an episode that's not an effing joke. Like we have an episode that is just like makes me feel something and is traumatic, you know, versus kind of silly. Yeah. Versus I, um, like, let's make Moon Knight lose all his powers for, for something we can achieve with a smartphone app. 
Sure. Like when, as soon as someone pointed that out, I was, was like, oh my God, I can't yeah. believe they did this. What do you mean? So you can do the Stargaze app sky. and you can rewind this oh. night sky <laughs> thousands of years. All free of having to, she had a, like a tablet there. Just do this instead of like, we need the assistance of a God and we're going to burn up, you know, they're going to notice and take away, yeah. seal them away and stuff. You know, it's just an excuse to get this to happen, you know, uh, cause they need to have it happen. They didn't have to have it happen. We, like you say, you didn't have to take away Moon Knight's powers. We barely got to see Moon Knight do anything. He right. shows up at the end of one and punches someone. He takes on a weird, a lame looking, you know, werewolf. And then he gets stabbed by a bunch of spears by an outfit that a moment ago reflected bullets. So I don't know. Um, and then his powers are gone. So you're saying there's inconsistency. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm saying I don't think Marvel took this show seriously. I think that they have a really cool character here and a really cool premise and a really good actor and a really good score. But they are... You know, I don't know. I'm not convinced they're going to do a season two. I'd be interested. I think that we're going to talk about effects budget. You know, like you just said, we had a good looking Wookiee. Now, can't we get a decent looking werewolf? I feel like they tried to tell a lot in this show. Let's have Moon Knight with a bunch of split personalities. Let's have his wife become a different superhero. Let's have his powers go away, visit the underworld, all this stuff in six episodes. It's like they're wrapping this whole thing up. You know, and then at the end, we didn't really make Harley progress. We thought maybe this was like sorted. No, we just wake up confused again with another persona, you know. So we're going to just start over again with this, you know. And it's like yeah. we've got nowhere. But there'll be a new costume. There'll be a new costume. Yes, yeah. right there. Yes. Going back to what you said about Bruce Wayne, my counter to that would be was Bruce Wayne a static character? Or was there a public persona of Bruce Wayne that was more of a clown versus Bruce Wayne in the Batcave or talking to other members of the Justice League where he's all business, but out in public, he, by necessity, needed to diffuse any suspicions of who he was. So certainly when we think of Bruce Wayne, we think of, we tend to think of him in one way, but really he is a well. So for me, seeing Stephen Grant only portrayed as this figment of uh, Mark Spector's imagination didn't bother me because there's a chance that Stephen can grow and he I mean, He's uh, never given the opportunity to be a tour. You're just going to be the sales guy because you're like, maybe he has a chance up, to is, Are you breaking up for Andrew? Andrew, you can hear everything Pete said? No. Uh-oh. Sorry, you were breaking up some there. Say that again. I'm sorry. Everything. Uh, uh, Starting with well, so like talking Bruce Wayne, you know, putting well, you, on different. Uh, yeah. uh, I feel like we of, got you know, what we you were saying Bruce about Wayne Bruce part. Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Grant would be the part that they right. Were, so in just the series, that's fictional, but there, there's a hint that Stephen is more than what he's allowed to be uh, in his job, for example, where he is an actually an expert in Egyptian mythology and history, but he's never given the opportunity to showcase. That. Sure. And if he's in a position where he can show his, then he's going to be less of a joke, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, and be shown a more of a leadership. Instead of like gift shop dork who just knows about. Egyptian mythology. I just um do you feel like they would have been at I least just, like more equal foils? I just because, think I needed because that to was like my problem. My, my protagonist. Well, I think I yeah. need to like my protagonist. I mean, I, so I get it. Like they that, worked the they worked the lovable loser angle like real hard. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it was a, it was a bit much. Like he could have caught a break a little bit and not been such a joke. 
that just I happened mean, to know everything I... that everybody needed to know about Egypt, Egyptian mythology and like language right. and hier- you know what I mean? Like it just happened to be like an expert. It could have been a little better if, you know, that expertise was recognized. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like I should watch the Moon Knight show and leave it thinking Moon Knight's really cool. Uh, yeah. As opposed to most of the time I watched the show, I was like, well, <clears throat> Ethan Hawke is doing a pretty good job as a bad guy here because he's Ethan Hawke. You know, that's what he does. Be, he's good. And then his uh, his wife uh, was seemed like she was more relatable. Yeah. Um, but as far as Moon Knight goes, you know, not seeing the cost of that much not having very good action sequences with him. And then I don't like the personas that were given. Sure. Um, it just, it just didn't seem like what I should have from a sure. moon night show. Um, yeah. So, so what I felt like was there, there was a, a deliberate setup for personas to be like opposite one another where like Mark would be like strong mercenary, you know, like, like no funny business like take no prisoners you know we're we're doing the thing give me control and steven was set up to be like oh my god i'm like super weak but somehow like i'm giving mark some trouble and i'm gonna rise up and you know i'm gonna like have my own moment and there were supposed to be like these complimentary things and they never really achieved that until these later two episodes where i where they finally decided to like care about one another and that's fine that, like, they didn't need to care about each other from the beginning. But they could have been a little more complimentary to one another. Instead, I felt like they both came off very abrasive in their interactions. And that turned into, like, abrasiveness for the audience. Mm-hmm. There were there were funny moments. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I enjoyed, like, why am I looking like Psycho Colonel Sanders? Like, oh, I enjoy... I I enjoy those great, like, throwaway, like... You know, I mean, they're not throwaway, but, you know, like, they're just, like, one-off, like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. That was funny. But there And you love the reality drama shows with the real housewives, but I when do. someone's <laughs> having a furious conversation with themselves, like, not loving himself, uh, that didn't work for you? No, it it did. I just feel like, like, the the they weren't given maybe like the right personality traits. Like I said, I felt like there was supposed to be like a setup of like strong versus weak, but somehow like weak overcomes, but there was too much other stuff going on. So that simple like storyline, like and we, and I mean, I mean like weak overcomes in the sense of like weak overcomes to be as important as Mark, because in these last two episodes, I really liked the symbiotic nature that they achieved for themselves. They were both feeling like they were important to one another. Like mm-hmm. I never respected Mark more than when he went back for Steven when he was lost in the sand. Like awesome. Finally, I really, I really care that you're doing this, but I, I just maybe felt like their personalities were a little too grading or maybe they just didn't quite have the right balance down in the first episodes where they both didn't come off a little like on the one hand mark was kind of a jerk and on the other hand steven was very judgy like Mm -hmm. he just like rushed to judgment a lot being like you're a killer and you're doing this and i was like can we hold on for like a second sometimes to maybe figure this out so a little less caricature yeah he's the sheltered boy, he's he, uh, Mark's innocence. Right, which I know pride. now. And yeah. I loved the whole, like, Mark was trying to protect his innocence, which was created in essence to protect his own, like, character and his own fragility from, like, the trauma that he's induced. Yeah. Yeah. It was such, like, an adorably sweet moment that he was trying to keep his, like, created split persona from finding out the truth so yeah. he could keep living Children in a fantasy in world. world. Yeah. yeah. Like he had to, in essence, protect himself, protecting himself. Like, oh God, it was so fragile and sad. That his, his mom hated him and wished he was. Oh, 
And yeah, these episodes so, were crushing. So part of Mark, you know, still loves his mom, but hates his mom. Creates a persona that only knows his mother as someone good, who he still has a relationship with, rather than the unfortunate trauma that the whole family endured. Right. You're still breaking up a little bit here and there. I think maybe you're, if you're too far from your computer or something a little bit, Pete. No, I think, I got I think, most of that, I think it's running. Uh, I think the computer's running hot. Is what I think. Ah, uh, sure. Okay. So <laughs> I, might, I might actually have to wrap it up a little bit here. Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, we don't want to keep you past your uh, any deadlines here and stuff. Right. So, you know, we'll give you last uh, last word here. Any any other thoughts you uh, have on on Moon Knight? <laughs> Episode six, uh, yeah. it, it, you had to go through six episodes to see Moon Knight in full action, where he's doing the flips and throwing the crescent darts, and then he's got uh, the uh, the cable gun <clears throat> flying uh, kicks, and so that last fight is everything that I wanted in Moon Knight show. So yeah, and yes, Batman has the the grappling gun but then again so did daredevil so uh, yeah yeah i feel like a grappling gun isn't anybody's do you know what i mean i never mind those those overlaps you know like there's That's such like a common about thing the different characters that yeah yeah, yeah. They even had it in you don't have web shooters <laughs> web shooters <laughs> for sure but at least it's a web like you can like justify okay it's a, it's a tweak so it's a a gun yeah, that shoots yeah. a cable and you know hauls you across the street so you can do flying kick to his jaws always. Whether it's Marvel DC or Gravity Fall. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent reference. Okay. Well, Pete thing so like ultimately, um I'm glad it seems like it's got your your seal of approval. Yep. Hopeful yep. for I season two. Yeah, and then the the appearance of Jake Lockley. So I, there's no yeah. there's no way around it. If you didn't read the the comic and you didn't pick up on the hints that there was personality, I mean the clues are in the closing credits and the opening credits. And Sarcophagus in episode five. So like, oh, where's Jake? Is that Jake? Is has it been Jake sure. all along? So right. So for me, that that end credit scene with Jake Lockley made the whole series for me. Yep, here okay. we go. And my kids actually were watching the uh, the end credits. That's Jake's costume right there. Mm, I've never seen Jake have a third since Steven as the psycho Carl Sanders suit. And <laughs> buckle up, maybe we'll have a new get it new Moon Knight. Yeah. <laughs> the man All in right. black so all right well, well thank you for inviting you me to, i appreciate it yeah absolutely it's been um, fun you need to get a, a fan for your computer so it doesn't overheat <laughs> next time everybody help pete get a, a, a new fan for his computer right. buy his books they're available on Please. amazon right now mm -hmm. um pete gilbertson peter um, j gilbertson at amazon.com if you like zombies words, alien goo uh check me out yeah absolutely all right thanks pete we'll thank see you, you later perfect all right well we thank pete very much for uh yes for jumping on with us hopefully everybody could hear him enough i thought maybe the audio cutting out was just like my earbud at sometimes and it cuts a few things so uh but we appreciate his take a lot given he's the the moon knight reader Exactly. Um, no, I need I needed the uh Jake Lockley explanation because while I wasn't like, oh my gosh, a new personality, like I didn't see this coming. I was just like, who, what, where, why? You know, sure. like I just I didn't need, I needed a little bit more about like this is established, this is like another thing that's happening, you know. This isn't yep. just like Disney throwing in some extra stuff. I need a little context. So I very much appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. Is, um, do you think, so was that person, that persona must've been created at the end there when the blackout happened to 
yes. deal with that, right? Because if it was which I was earlier, very annoyed about, his scales wouldn't have been balanced, right? Exactly, any, exactly, so. because there would have been another factor mm-hmm. that we would have had to be dealing. And isn't with. it? Is that kind of a cop out that we have our hero? That you know, again, we don't get to see the coolest thing. We get to have our yes. main, our people we've seen, kind of keep their hands clean. I don't have to do the dirty deed, you know. Ooh, so I didn't take it that way about like not having to do the dirty deed because I felt like Stephen was finally sort of on board with like we're Moon Knight and we're doing the yep. thing and I know how to fight. So the thing that really just annoyed me was like I finally got this reconciliation. Why are we having these blackouts? I'm real annoyed about it. Sure. Like maybe mm-hmm. if they happened an episode later, I could have been like, oh no, like we had this, you know, great moment and I thought things were going well, but clearly something else has happened. It was yeah. just like too jammed in, too close to like, I wanted to enjoy Stephen and Mark being on the same page. Yeah. That's what I mean. We never got like to a really- unit like moon knight we never got to really get into that well, yeah because i liked him here <laughs> yeah i mean i and liked him finally, before he's sometimes finally, yeah he's finally moon knight and he's he's but like, he's kicking like butt. yeah yeah he's mm-hmm. in it to win it and like united purpose united soul yep and then we never got any um as long as i at least as i don't remember um we didn't get any conclusion with um layla we had the kind of awkward bits with Layla yeah. flirting with Steven and then then they die and then they come back. We never get any, yeah. like, are they going to be together? Is the marriage going to work out here? How is this going to work between right. the three of them? You know, <laughs> we don't well, address yeah. any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're finally united in, like, purpose, kind of brotherhood spirit like are they sharing layla is this like you know we are we accept it's kind of a weird like we are the same person but we're not the same person but we are the same person so how do how do you draw delineate lines there and how do you define your relationships um you know even if you're okay with switching back pretty seamlessly now between steven and and mark is layla gonna be okay with that is it okay that she's in the middle of a conversation with Mark and Steven's like, whoop, have something to add. She's like, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Right. bring back Mark. I don't want to talk to you right now. Mm-hmm. Well, if you start treating it like you're always in a conversation with Present, three people. With, uh, yeah. 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 Right. Then which you're, which you know. presents its own issues. Yeah. Because, you know, there's right. always like a saying, there can't be three people in a relationship. Right. But like, can there Is be? that a saying? Is this? I mean. Yeah. There, yeah there's something about like, Yeah. Like something about a third person in a relationship. I mean, but, I don't know. That's, but, a, that's I was going to call Will Smith and Jada and ask if it was, <laughs> um, that's going. But yeah, I mean, it's it's very yeah. The end is left a bit frenetic. I think there there was an aim of like mystery and setup and ooh, but it fell short of having that. Instead, I was just left annoyed. Like it would have like, been intrigued to me- by Jake, but also annoyed. Yeah, right. Yep. Because then we, again, I felt like we didn't accomplish anything because right. as soon as, you know, wraps up and they wake up in the same apartment, still cuffed to the bed. So it's like they haven't improved or learned anything or it's like made themselves, again, better adjusted. Layla right. wasn't there with them, you right. know? And so it's just, we're back to the bachelor pad. We're back to like, we forgot stuff. Well, and like the things that you pointed out, like we could have been back to that bachelor pad and Mark being like, this is really where you live and blah, blah, blah. That would have been funny if he didn't wake up like chained to the bed. If he was just like in bed chilling or like Layla was up making coffee or, you know, laying beside him. Because that's actually what I expected to see. I thought like, oh, there's a different shape in the bed. Maybe Layla's there. There would have been some like, we made progress. Obviously we're not perfect and you know, we're not solving the whole issues of like our, our now blended personality or our now blended being, but yeah, progress would have been nice and it would have been nice to, like I said, enjoy it just a bit longer. Just, Mm -hmm. just like a hair. 
because we never really did the entirety of the series. We just got to the good, like working through all is revealed, like here's how we're protecting each other. And here's like what's happening. And here's how we're uniting to fix yep. this. And bam, so, it's all blo- it's all blown up immediately. Let let me let me lay this little like blueprint out for you. <laughs> <laughs> let, episode let me lay one some down for you. All right. <laughs> episode one, we open on Moon Knight chasing a werewolf up to Pete's standards across the rooftops. And he is running him down, and he's like, there's a pack that ends up coming after him. You know, there's more than one. He's got to fight all these things off, and is it awesome? It's the it's the hook we need. It's wow, this is Moon Knight. Then we we wake up, and we have like for this person, which we presume is Moon Knight, but we wouldn't technically know, sure. is like going off to his work or whatever. And we have, you know, like, how is this person going to be, you know, he can start getting into some intrigue and he doesn't exactly, you know, know what, what that's about. Maybe he's seen the crimes, like the damage from sure. the chase the night before and all that stuff, you know, but he's going about his business in his like, you know, conference room meeting, what he's, whatever. And we can start seeing how there's some, he's getting introduced to some sort of nefarious lots and things going on and his side of office life sure. that's going to intermingle with what Moon Knight is having to deal with, with Mark Spector, what Mark Spector is having to deal with. However this goes, in episode two, we get and we start like, so at the end of this episode, we need to realize that there are two personalities here and right. they're living separate right. lives. That's how this has to end. Episode two can begin with something more like what we saw in episode five where we see why the they split these personalities and where sure. they came from so sure. we build this sort of origin and at the end of it we meet layla and we're like introduced to a, you know like okay we can we, if we want to have her be estranged in the sense that we try to leave her behind or something i don't i didn't like that exactly either but yeah we can we can have it where one of them is married to her and the other one doesn't realize that or something like that. Yeah. So we get this emotional backstory, but it's ended with we're introduced to Layla, and then she is the uh, the expert on the Egyptian mythology. So the from the corporate side and from the like evil Moon Knight facing villain side, we have sure. something come together, and Layla it has the knowledge because she's. Not going to be Layla in my version. She's going to be the character that she is in the comic books with the archaeological father that then knows all the shit about this. Sure. And they go together on this this mission. And, you know, however the rest of it goes, we get to see a lot of cool Moon Knight action and all this stuff. That's how I, I would set this series up and hopefully like the characters still have a sure. little bit of what's going on. But then having characters have their purpose a little more like we can have Mr. Knight or whatever, you know, he can be the guy that needs to deal with the gangsters. He needs to do the talking, you know, he needs to like run the deals and he goes into swanky sure. nightclubs and stuff, you know, and stuff like that. And then the other guy is like, he's just bloodier and he's, you know, running around the rooftops and in the sewers and stuff. So I feel like I... I like about 85 to 90% of that. Like all of that makes more logical sense to me than like the setup of this story. But I sort of feel like I, I kind of like the idea of, of Stephen Grant, you know, if he's going to be our, our, you know, kind of Bruce Wayne, Joe, Mm -hmm. regular, not superhero. I kind of love him like being like a leading Egyptologist so that he and Layla can connect that way. Sure. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I dug that part of their sharing. If he was just like a, like a stronger character like that, that wouldn't have been so right. like, why are you creeping on Mark's wife? She should still like, know more. Bumbling. She should still know more. They can like, connect there. Yes. Like I, super I, I, rich and just like work at the museum as his like 
I just, this is my passion stuff and I love yeah, it. And I right. love being like the expert in my field and I get to go like have my conferences and she comes in and she's like, um, I don't need any of that because I still know more than you. And he's like, how do you know more than me? I, I know all the stuff and I get invited to all the lectures. And so like, there's like right. competition and fun there. Also kind of love the idea of this like really strong, confident character like having to chain himself to the bed at night. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like begrudgingly, that part of it been, like yeah, like oh yeah. my god, I'm so like rich and, and you know, like I'm so sought after and like I'm smooth chalker, like I have charm and stuff like that. But I can't this ever bring a lady home, home yep. because I got my chains and I got, you know, my sand around the bed because in Egyptian mythology, whatever, like you know, I didn't I didn't really quite get the sand. I'm sure I'm sure there's like you know, fun, like Easter eggy kind of shout out for somebody who's in the know. But I, I bought it because it felt like within the realm of the world. I would have loved that kind of like, he has to tie himself up to the bed and like forgets about it and like has to do all of his like crazy stay up at night. You know, I'm trying not to have these episodes because what's wrong with me? I'm so successful. Why do I have these things? Yep. So I, right. so bringing yeah. all of that together dynamite like i feel like we just created a kick-ass show yeah it, we don't need to make our uh we don't have to have so much like i don't know animosity Underdog. between yeah it, we, like the pity friction. for him is too much yeah and then so much friction between our three characters yeah like because like you said that that would be interesting thing that's uh, internal conflict on his own persona that he has all this success yet is, you know, is, is shackled in his own way, you know, literally. Right. Um, and he could have like been part of who funded, uh, Layla and her dad's expeditions, you know, right. so that'd be an so interesting like connections connection all for, over the place. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet she's married to, I, I don't know. Uh, like his, there, like his there's... other persona somehow. Yeah. yeah. It's like mm -hmm. him, but it's not him. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like there's something more more entertaining and enjoyable that was here that didn't have to hinge on making our protagonist so pathetic for so long. Yeah, it was um, it was really hard to watch him be like such an underdog. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I felt like there was there was like a very deliberate setup of like strong and weak sides of himself. And, you know, the week was supposed to eventually like rise up and be equal. And it just like felt overbalanced to start. So it took us a really long time to get to where we are. And we didn't have that kind yeah. of time. I, you know, me, right. I'm always yeah. worried about six episode shows and Hawkeye, yeah. I think, pulled it off. And this one didn't. Right. We had too much exposition. I just wanted to leave the show really liking Moon Knight, if nothing else. Like wanting to delve into the Moon Knight comics, being sure. interested in Moon Knight, you know. Well, and, and, I, um, and I did. I just didn't feel like I was able to like him long enough. Like I like sure. him now, but I feel sort of put off by the time it took to get me there. Sure. Yeah. And if we'll get a season two, I don't know. Yeah. And I, I still won't. I still won't forgive the kind of what seems like amateurish behind the camera sort of things the imitating the rooftop chase in uh what in was it oh, in egypt oh, at that point oh, i'm not yeah, sure if yeah, it was in Cairo, yeah 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 and it was just some of these things that were just not well i did like the last fight in the last episode yeah i thought that was, that was well put together plus with the but, gods like Kanchu and amit i feel like yeah, we haven't even talked about like cool. i actually really loved amit like once i got used to like tawarit and the hippo lady being like a yeah. thing then Amit came in and was that much cooler. Sure. Yeah, no, like I it wasn't I, she I because was she wasn't good. the first one, she ended up being really sweet looking. Yeah. That could that stuff could have been sillier and wasn't. So I Yeah, they they pulled I it off. Like it. it started off silly and then they pulled it off. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like uh the hippo very well animated and like yeah. very like it's a very interesting persona for her, but I thought it was actually pretty good. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. So, um, 
Oh, yeah, Luna, Luna had some pieces, man. Like there were there were cool things. They just it just didn't all tie together. I don't know. It was you know, frenetic and not in a like we're mirroring our main character's state of mind frenetic. It just wasn't quite I don't know, all figured out. Yeah. Cuz I still feel I just, like there's there's questions I have about like this like institutionalization where does Harrow fit in, like, in an institution? Oh, Do you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. doctor, patient, yeah. like, does he know his own reality? That was a yeah. that was a big step to introduce for him and a big switch for his character that we now have, like, also wildly pulled away from in the last yeah. few moments introducing Jake Lockley. Yep. So that was really hard for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we, um, you know, they kind of set it up almost like you could think was a lot of this stuff just in his head, you know? I mean, I don't think so, but it uh, yeah. could have been. They got they got trippy and mind gamey at the end, so. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, I'm sure I will think of more things to say over the, mm -hmm. in the coming weeks about this show. Sure. Um. Ultimately, I don't know my expectations. I don't know where they were at. My hopes were high, I think. Sure. My expectations were kind of low. My hopes were, were high. Sure. So, um, so you said you know your order. Yeah. I do, it's... yeah. I do, yeah. So I, I am putting Moon Knight... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Moon Knight above Falcon and Winter Soldier. Falcon and Winter Soldier still last for me. I, I think that's what I do too. Because this I hate show it because I love so Sebastian Stan, but like the the, sure. the show did not do him any favors. This show was still more consistent. Yeah. Tonally. Than, than uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, yeah, and that's saying right. something. Yeah. So I think <laughs> that's where it it wins and and for having a new character, that's fun. Having the good score that has the yep. Egyptian flavor, that's fun. The great performance by Oscar Isaac when given the chance is fun. Yes. Um, you know, Ethan the moments Hawk. like in the picture we're seeing right now, yeah, between Ethan Ock and him in uh, yeah. the doctor patient kind of scenario was fun. So, yeah, the villain was more believable. There weren't like struggles I had yep. with it. Yep. Like the the purpose, the thrust of the show made more sense. Yep. Like very yep. overall. I mean, obviously like individual moments we were like, what is happening here? But yeah. Right. Yep. Um, and then it still it still loses to Loki because Loki has a lot of fun ideas it plays with. Uh free of freedom of uh freedom of will you know, free choice um, yeah. and plays with time some and, and all that kind of thing. Well, and I think you don't and... have a character issue. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I know you yeah. have like a Marvel issue, but you don't have a character issue like you do here. Yeah, because I, though I don't like what they've done to Loki, uh, if, if I take myself out of, again, why I think Loki would be better show that was just completely separate from everything Marvel. Right. Right. Like I enjoy seeing that character, even if it's not exactly Loki. Yeah. And, um, and I think it was, that is shot much more competently. Um, yes. it's, uh, it's a more beautiful show. And, uh, and then WandaVision also gets props for being different techniques for shooting mm -hmm. as it goes through the eras. So that mm -hmm. is a, a, a fun that. kind of way to do that. And also not having character issues because, um, you know, up to that point, I'm very much a fan of Wanda and Vision. So, yeah, yeah. For for me, everything about that show is is um, what all these shows should be. And the only disappointment to me is, of course, we've talked about ad nauseum. You know, her brother Pietro is 
there's a whole chance to use Evan Peters to do an X-Men setup, and they didn't. And, and, like, now we know that they can do X-Men, so it makes me even crazier that they wouldn't do Mm -hmm. it for WandaVision. So that's my only... I mean, I know it's kind of large, but it's my complaint with WandaVision. Sure. And everything else just kind of, like, fades for me. I will say I, I will not hint at or spoil any of the things from the new Doctor Strange movie. But I will say I've heard a number of sizable spoilers and they don't yes. make me happy. Um, sure. About where things are going. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Marvel, but, Marvel's maybe got to stop and take stock and maybe write a sinking ship because we've been praising Marvel for so long about what they've been doing. And I don't know. They just kind of need to get some of their mojo back. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, we've gone too long without an Avengers movie that's writing, steering, setting the course. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, you know, there was a, a really cool thing in the way that, like, you know, Thor and Captain America and Iron Man had their origin stories and they Before were self contained, but also felt like, it really was part of the same thing and moving forward. You know, I don't know. I, yeah, um, I think there was always, because there was always that thing to look forward to at the end of each movie, you know, that mm-hmm. like thing about like, what's the next thing, that little scene at the end where you were all like, we all got to wait till the end credit scene because we're going to get the next piece of the puzzle. So it was yeah. like, so those stories that you knew they weren't really. Yeah. I think there's no puzzle story. now. Yeah, exactly. They're just there's no, pieces. Like, there's no like end credits like, ooh, what are we getting next? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I, I, I felt like that was very unifying for audiences. Yeah. To, like all wait till the end. You know, I, I still remember like, you know, everybody lingering in the theater, sitting, standing, whatever. But we're all just like, here it comes. Because mm-hmm. so, whatever we get now. now hasn't been meaningful or had a payoff. Yeah. You know. Well, and it's and it's it's kind of less fun like the end credit scene here for Moon Knight is an example. I'm not I'm not faulting Moon Knight only for this. I'm just saying like because we're talking Moon Knight. The end credit scene is about Moon Knight. Right. You know what I mean? Like if it was about something else, we could have been like, "Ooh, next thing." You mm-hmm. know, and now we're just sort of like That was weird. That was Yeah. Are we ending on this weird note or are we signaling a season two? If not, I'm thinking this we is don't get weird. it. Too. Because what are you going to do yeah. then with a season two? If you bring in this new character now, are we going to go through the same thing again where the other two <laughs> are just blanking all the time? We have to reconcile time? a third personality. Yeah. Please no. Like how tedious is that? Yeah. I mean, I don't so. know. Dis- Disney makes Disney, Marvel, whoever makes decisions that you know i don't see coming all the time so who knows i yeah. i for sure didn't see a loki season two happening even though i think it deserves it i was shocked out of my mind when they said they were gonna do it 